everybody welcome to floss tube number four it's my birthday and I have stuff to show you so but first um, I'm looking at my list uh, first I want to do thank yous and very first I want to thank um, thank Kay of Kay's cross stitch because um, I meant to thank her last week and I forgot I seem to forget something every time no matter how long I sit and think about making my list and think I've got everything, I always forget something. So a few weeks ago, um, prior to my last video, Kay, of course, included me in her um, her flubies, her floss tube newbies, and um, I definitely got some, um, some views and some subscribers uh, stemming from that, and I really... Um, wanted to make sure I thanked her for that. And I think it's great that she makes an, I mean, lots of people do shout outs and make an effort, but um, Kay uh, makes a real, like a extra special effort, I think, to specifically point out new folks and get them some, get them some attention. And I think that's, that's, um, that's really nice. So thank you, Kay, for including me in your flubies. <laughs> Okay. Um, I also want to thank um, Drew at at uh, at Weasley Studios um, because um, because he mentioned me in a recent video. He also made a very nice comment to me. Um, I mean, I've had lots of nice comments, but um, he did make a comment um, about liking pumpkins too, and uh, and mentioned me in um, in the video he did about. Uh, about six days ago mentioned me in his shout out. So thank you, Drew. I, I like your videos too. And I agree with most everything you say about pumpkins and pumpkin spice things. Um, and that pumpkins are definitely for year, year round. And, um, and I think that um, when you stitch up that Lindy Stitches um, happy pumpkin spice season, I think that, I think that you should just leave, leave it up year round. You know, you like pumpkin spice year round, so I think it's fine to leave things up year round. I leave, I leave everything I want to up year round. I don't care if it's Christmas and it's not Christmas time or if it's 4th of July and it's not 4th of July time. Um, if I have stitched it and bothered to hang it on my wall, I'm probably going to leave it up year round. Um, uh, third, I want to, um, to thank, uh, uh, a commenter um, last week, Amy Kilburn. Um, she, um, I posted, not last week, two weeks ago, I posted with my last video that I was looking for um, something to go with my Just Nan Peacock Magic, Ma Peacock Majesty um, project that I just purchased and um, and uh, she directed, she pointed me in the right direction for a solution. It's not a, the exact called for thing. I'll show you later, but um, in my um, in my stuff I got part. Um, but she uh, she pointed me in the direction uh, of of uh, of a Stitcher's Paradise on Facebook, and I was able to purchase a couple of things from from the lady who runs that. Um, Evidently, it's a store that she's um, and they're clearing out the stock, and she was very helpful. And she had a couple of different things, neither of which are the exact called for, but um, but both of which I think I'm going to be able to for sure. I'm going to be able to use one of them, and I'm going to try to use both of them um, in uh, in the project. And um, so, thank you to Amy, Amy Coburn. Um, lots of people left left several people left me comments, and um, but it just so happens that. Uh, the, the Amy Kilburn was uh, the one who sent me in the direction of what I eventually purchased and what I think is think is going to work out real nice. So, um, oh, uh, Vanna, everybody knows Vanna, the Twisted Stitcher. Um, she hasn't done a like a video in a little while. I really miss her. Hers is one of the ones that like I see it and I'm like, oh, gotta watch that right away. Um, I get very excited when I see it. <laughs> A Vana video, a Twisted Stitcher video. But Vana, one um, one morning I was sitting at work and my phone kept, um, uh, I get, it doesn't make noise, but when I get alerts on, uh, when things happen on Instagram, um, my, um, my phone, um, my phone lights up repeatedly as people are liking and subscribing and commenting and stuff like that. And my phone just went nuts. It like kept lighting up like every, <laughs> every few minutes and I hadn't just posted something or I had the night before but it wasn't it wasn't real normal so I went and I looked and I kind of scrolled down and I saw that Vana mentioned you in a comment and I went and I looked at um I looked at Vana's post where she'd mentioned me in a comment and um 
So there was a picture of me on, on a TV screen or computer screen or something while she was doing her work and she um, pointed people in my direction to watch my video and I did get a little, my video, so I did get a little bump from that um, on YouTube, but <laughs> um, I got about 40 new Instagram um, subscribers <laughs> that morning, um, obviously from her. So, um, so thank you, Vana. Um, oh, speaking of which, my name's Christine, if I didn't say it already. And I recently changed my channel name here to, um, Christine, every stitch of pleasure. Um, I've gotten rid of my last name, although you can still find me by la my last name, but my last name is, you know, it's a pain in the ass. So, um, so, um, you know, that, that name just kind of came to me and it's how I feel about stitching or how I want to feel when I'm stitching. So I thought it was appropriate. Um, so I'm now Christine Every Stitch Pleasure. Um, and we hope, we hope it is. <laughs> and, um, and then, um, oh, and on Instagram, uh, I'm CMD as in cat mother dog 586, CMD 586 on Instagram. And um, the final thank you today I want to give is to Janny. Um, her her channel I think it's Janny Stitches. Her channel is Y A N Y, but it is pronounced um, pronounced Janny. Um, and uh, she's in Mexico and she does beautiful things. I know a lot of you are um, are aware of her. Um, but I won um, I just won her her recent giveaway, which I'm super excited about and. Um, when, when I just won it, so it's not, it's the stuff isn't here yet. It has to come all the way from Mexico to Alaska. So who knows when I'll get it. Um, but when, when I do get it, I will, um, I will certainly, um, certainly share, share what she sent me. But, um, but I love her videos. She has amazing work. She says she's a busy person. I'm, I believe she says she's a busy person and I believe her, but wow, she manages to get a lot, um, a lot of beautiful things done and up on her wall and she dyes some of her own fabric and um the projects she does you know she does a lot of Nora Cor Corbett and Mirabilia she does other things too but you'll see you know behind her in the background and lots of very recognizable beautiful mermaids and pretty ladies and stuff from uh, from Mirabilia um and um but she, yeah in spite of in spite of where she lives and you know, things not being as easy to come by as they are for, for those of us in the United States. Um, you know, she manages to do a lot of beautiful things and get them framed and, you know, fully finished and hung up on her wall. And it's just, um, I love her videos and she seems like a lovely person, but, um, I love her videos and, um, and thanks in advance for the giveaway. Okay. So speaking of giveaways, um, I'm going to do a giveaway. Um, I'm gonna do my giveaway drawing. Two weeks ago, I mentioned that I was going to give away to one person these two patterns. And um, and I'm doing it the old fashioned way because the phone that I would use to do the random number generator is the phone that I'm recording this video on. So um, I didn't wanna have, I could have dug out an old phone or something. But anyway, I figured, you know, there's only 15 names. I got plenty of, plenty of uh, comments, but not everybody who commented um, apparently wanted to enter the giveaway, which is great. Um, I appreciated all, all of the comments. Um, I did look through twice. I made sure, I think I made sure I caught everybody's name. Um, and there were 15 comments that were, um, were clearly entrance into the giveaway. And I put them all in the cup and I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. Um, and so I'm going to draw a name from this cup and the winner of the giveaway is Verpi R, um, V I R P I R. Hopefully, you can read read my writing. Um, Verpi R, and um, um, so she's, I assume she, she is um, the winner of my drawing, and I will put my. Um, I will put my email address down in the um, in the box below this video. Hopefully, I will remember. I will try very hard to remember. Um, and um, and um, Verpi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Please, uh, please go ahead and um, and send me an email or whatever, or um, send me an email or comment or contact me on Facebook or or whatever you want, and give me your information, and I will. 
mail these out to wherever in the world you are. Um, and I hope you enjoy them. Okay, so, um, so next, um, I want to show, um, I'm going to show, I, my list is in a funny order. I'm going to show the stuff I got. I'm going to show the stuff I got, and then I'm going to show my whips and my finishes. Um, so, stuff I got. Um, let me rearrange my little pile because I just realized I'm doing this in a different order than I planned. Alright, so, it's my birthday. So, I got, I had birthday money to spend um, prior to my, for, in anticipation of my birthday. And I spent that money. And um, I also um, gave my husband um, a wish list with <laughs> one thing on it that I said, you must get this. Basically, don't come home if you don't get this for me. And then the rest was, you know, very broad and you get what you want um, from here. And so um, I just have a big pile of stuff that I, that I got. Um, and I don't think I'm going to care about the order. Um, so, um, the thing I told my husband, he absolutely had to buy me. Pardon me. Well, I drop stuff and pick it up. The thing I told my husband he absolutely had to buy me, or else, was one yard, one yard, of Picture This Plus, yeah, you can't even see it all. One yard, Picture This Plus, ale, in um, Edinburgh, 36 count linen. And I wanna do everything on this. Um, like all the um, all the primitive hair patterns and um, some little stitcher patterns and ro rovaris, rovaris? I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, there's a bunch of, a bunch of stuff I want to do to do on this. Um, one of my favorite primitives, and I love 36 count. I like to work in two over two on 36 count. So um, this is this is gonna get used. Um, and I got a whole yard of it because I love it and that'll give me the freedom to, to say, oh, I wanna stitch that project. Hey, I got fabric for that. And I won't have to like wait, you know, for fabric to come. That's why I like to buy it in big quantities. Plus, that was not quite a hundred dollars on one, two, three stitch. And really that's the, a good price, I mean, you know, rather than buying um, fabric in smaller quantities, it's, if you know you're gonna, if you know you're gonna eventually use it, it is a good, it is a good price. And it's just a luxury to have, um, to have, to have fabric in your stash so that when you come across something you like, you can, you know, you can just start it. You don't have to, you don't have to wait. Um, and then I bought, um, on eBay, I talked before about um, the color Millennium Blue, which I believe has been discontinued by Zweigart, and I wasn't even looking for it, but I stumbled upon it, a whole yard of it on eBay for $35, which um, I haven't even researched, but I think that's a good price for, uh, for a whole yard. Um, it was a price I was, I was okay with paying, regardless. Um, because, you know, I just spent um, $100 on a whole yard of, of um, hand dyed and yes it's hand dyed and I understand that that increases the price greatly but you know for me it's the color I want whether it's hand dyed or not um it's the color I want and so to get a yard for $35 feels pretty great when I just um when we just paid a hundred dollars for for a yard so this is millennium blue and again a yard of millennium blue look at that that is a beautiful blue to compare this is blue spruce. So, um, this is blue, this is blue spruce and this is millennium blue. So this is more, this is both brighter and darker. This is kind of grayish, gr maybe a little bit of green to it, kind of a primitive blue. This is a, um, this is a, like a brighter blue. Um, there's a lot of things I could do on this, but um, first thing that comes to mind for me actually is I want to do all of the book, Brooks books, um, the free, I think they're free still, the free Advent animals. I want to do all of them on this. I think this would be, I don't know what blue she, what blue she used for her, um, 
for hers and I've seen it done in all sorts of sorts of colors but this to me looks like a lovely blue to do all of those and of course it will leave plenty left over too so um, and then I did as you saw some more blue spruce this is a small cut the, because it's 28 count and I don't use a whole lot of 28 count um, I just got a small cut of 28 count to do my um, my peacock majesty on and um, I did also get um, all of the thing well most all of the things I need for peacock majesty I'm still waiting on one skein of Krynic Krynic um, Silk Mori from 123 that they had to special order for me but um, I have everything else I need for it and now thanks to Amy Coburn I have um, I have the peacock pin slash beads to that I'm going to try on on it and I'll show you those I also have some little beads that evidently came with the came with one of the pins and um, and I may or may not use that on the project you know they were just kind of a bonus as far as I was concerned um, they're um, like a very pretty blue variegated bluish peacock peacock appropriate color so I may use them on the on the project if um, if they seem to be right to me once I get going on it so those it's a fairly good representation of the color. Little um, seed beads. I don't size eleven. Probably they're pretty little. I think the eleven is the is the little ones. Um, and then um, this little peacock. Let's see here. Oh, oh. You, the front and back are both the front and back. Wow. Well, you're only going to see the front on on my project that is the front of the peacock you can see the peacock head and feathers but the back actually looks like the back of a peacock which is awesome but um but you're only going to see the front um and i'm gonna oh, i'm going to oh there is there is a hole oh whew, for a minute there i thought there wasn't a hole anywhere there is a hole in there are holes in either side of the peacock on the left and the right uh, here and over here for thread to go through thank goodness because I was like wait how am I gonna because this I think is gonna go in the top center of the pattern here let me get it out in case you didn't see my last video I bought this pattern and it didn't I couldn't get so far as I could tell, I couldn't get the peacock that goes up there. So I'm going to put this up there and it's quite a bit smaller, but the way this is, I think it'll work just fine. Like I think I may have to add in a few extra stitches to make that space smaller, but I should, I should be able to manage that. Um, even though altering things is not my forte, I do think I'll be able to, to manage that. So, um, so that is intended to go up at the top. And then as a bonus, I mean, well, I paid for it, but um, as a secondary thing, I got this little beautiful peacock bead, and it's got a whole hole. It does have holes, and it. it is a bead. Um, and I'm gonna try to find a spot to put that on. Look how pretty that is to put that on the project, because it is gorgeous. And I don't think I want to put it up at the top, but I think I can find another spot on um on the pattern to put it i bet i can so i'm really gonna try so because it is really a pretty little thing um so yeah neither of those are exactly what is what is called for but um i am um, i think i think they're i i think that they're both great and i think that i can envision making making one or more of them um more of them work for me so I'm very excited about that. I almost started this project, but I'm missing that one thread from one, two, three stitch. And it's, uh, it's a thread that, um, is called for in, in the first band of the pattern, in the last band of the pattern and throughout. So I really didn't want to start until, until I had, it. I could have, but, and just skipped around, but I chose not to because, um, I'd rather just wait and get it all. 
Okay, let's see. What else? Um, oh, lots of people have this. I ordered this through my work. It's Dover. It's a Dover needlework book. Um, I believe it's Dover. Yeah, it is Dover. Um, I have several Dover books and they're all good and they're all um you know reasonably priced dover makes dover makes some really good inexpensive things um several people have shown this i'm pretty sure emily at eclectic possessions has this one and um uh the patterns in it it's all patterns i won't show it i don't think anybody would care but i won't show it anyway but it all looks like and here's the back it all looks basically like stuff that you would see you know on, on a long dog or something like that uh um, lots of possibilities in here um, for like monochromatic monochromatic designs anyway um, I've wanted this for a while and seen so many people talk about it. I just and I you know like I said before I work at a bookstore and it's far too easy for me to order things for myself at that bookstore so I just do and I did um, I also I've been aware of this one for a long time um, Wanda's Wanda's witchery from the um from the autumn series of buttons and beads Mill Hill and um it's been on my list for a long time but Michelle Garrett at Bendy Stitchy was recently doing this one and that was the last straw I was like okay I'm just gonna get that so um one two three didn't happen to have it in stock at the time I looked probably because everybody saw it on uh, Michelle's video and was like I gotta have that and they all bought it out I I don't know I'm just surmising they could have been it could be out of print. They could have been sold out of it for a long time for all I know. But um, I found it on, um, on um, you know, eBay for a couple of, a couple, you know, not an unreasonable price. A couple dollars cheaper than I would have paid on, um, on one, two, three anyway. So I went ahead and got it on eBay and I'm, I'm very excited about this. We all know I'm a sucker for Halloween. But I love, I love these hot colors. And I love, I love anything that reminds me of um, childhood trips. I lived two hours when I was growing up. I lived two hours from Disneyland and in the um, 70s and 80s. And because um, I'm 43 today. So in the 70s and 80s is when I was going to Disneyland for the most, most of the time. And I loved those like old black lit um, Disneyland rides. I think I've mentioned this before, the black lit colors in like Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland, etc. And I love anything that reminds me of that look. Um, and this one certainly does. So I got that. I got that on my own off of eBay. Um, also on my own off of eBay. And this um, Ampu Stitcher is responsible for this. I love her. I love her videos. If you haven't watched her videos, she and I have been friends on Instagram for a, a, a good a good while. And um, she's a lovely person and she does some really awesome things. And so Ampu Stitcher, all one word, A-M-P-U-S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Um, she does great videos and she's on Instagram. She has, uh, she's very inspiring. And, um, and um, I've been aware of this for a long time, but when she got hers, I was like, okay, I gotta have it. Um, I paid almost 30 well with shipping I paid 30 bucks for it at least um which I felt like was a lot but when I looked it apparently is still in print and apparently $30 is about the going price on this in the United States because I didn't find it anywhere for for less than that so I paid about 30 bucks for it um and I'm happy with it it's worth $30 to me because this is a really awesome um this is a really awesome design and I think I'm actually going to do this on my and this is one of the things I think I'm going to do on my 36 count um, ale. I think it'll look good. Um, I've contemplated a few things and I haven't pulled all the flosses for it, but um, I think it'll look good on that. Um, and it only calls for one non-DMC. It, um, it calls for one single silk that I don't have and that I don't think that um, one, two, three even carries. So I'm going to have to find it. Um, yeah, I could do it. They offer a they offer a substitution, a DMC substitution, but I think, um, I think I'm, you know, I've said it before, I, I like to use the, the fancy flosses when they're called for. Um, so I'm going to probably, um, find a place to order that and get that. Okay. So those are, that completes the things I order for myself. Um, my husband, in addition to the picture, this plus, uh, ale fabric that I flat out demanded that he buy for me, 
Um, he got me this Victorian charm kit, um, which I, it's, it's open because I started it today. You know, you gotta have a birthday start, right? So I started this today. So I'll show you my start on that later. Um, he got me this. It's been on my list for a long time. It has a lot of French knots in it. I appreciate that. Um, and, um, and I'm doing it on my, I'm doing it on a navy, um, cachelle instead of the, instead of the Ada it comes with, um, because I don't appreciate the Ada that comes with the Dimensions kits. Uh, he also bought me another Buttons and Beads from the Autumn series. This one is called Moonlit Treaters, and, um, and I love it. I love that bright moon, and I love the, the little kids dressed up and trick-or-treating, and I can't wait to do this. So he bought me that. And um, he bought me, I've never had a Dimensions Gold, but I have quite a few on my wish list. He bought me um, Coastal View. And um, again, I'm probably going to switch out the fabric on this and stitch it on um, some sort of, some sort of, um, of linen or even weave. Um, not necessarily something expensive, but I just, um, and I'm not anti-Ada, but, um, the Ada, now I haven't opened up the gold and maybe if, if I open it up and they're using Zweiger Ada, then fine, I'll use it. But I, I doubt that. So, um, so probably I'm going to switch up the fabric on this one to, um, Coastal View. Um, and this one I've seen a bunch of people doing. And this one is um, Alan Maley, Maley? Gracious Era is what this one is. And um, all of those little snowflakes in there. A couple of interesting things, what I've seen from other people's postings on this project. Number one, all those snowflakes coming down, those are all French knots, which is awesome. But the other thing is, somebody posted about this, and I could swear they said that those are not charted. Like you just stitch them wherever you want, which um, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> That's not easy for me. Why couldn't they have just, if they wanted to do it randomly, why couldn't they have just randomized it for me and stuck it on the on the on the chart? Because <laughs> knowing me and how much I love French knots, I'm probably gonna put way too many of them. It's gonna be like a snow blizzard instead of a peaceful um, snow. <laughs> snowstorm to go out and do your Christmas Christmas shopping in. <laughs> but I shall try to control myself and be reasonable about it. But um, anyway, and this comes with a pretty blue um, Ada um, in it, which again, I probably won't use. Um, I will probably um, find, find some light blue linen or even weave. Um, Unless I open it up and am impressed, particularly impressed by the um, the quality of the fabric, which I doubt, because so far the dimensions I don't I haven't done the dimensions gold, but the regular dimensions kits I have really been underwhelmed by the both the quality of the fabric that they use and also um, the size of it. It's you know they don't in my opinion, quite leave you enough to stitch on. And I'm not that, and I'm not that picky. You know, I'm not a three inches on all sides girl. I usually do two inches um, is my standard. And I've even been known to go a, less, a little less than two inches if I really wanted something to fit on a piece of fabric. But um, on some of these kits, um, there's really not quite enough fabric there. And, um, and, uh, and I don't appreciate that. Um, so let's see, that is, I think, I think that's everything I got. Um, all right. So now, um, for finishes and whips, I worked on five things this last two weeks. Um, I have two finishes. One was an expected finish and one was not expected and was a happy surprise. And I have two starts um, and one whip. So let us start with the finish that was expected. Um, so I am going to show you a picture of where it was before. And 
pardon the crinkle. And I have since finished it. This is Halloween Cat by Satsuma Street on um, 32 count blue spruce by Zweigert, which is a very nice neutral. And I finished this just a couple of days after, after um, my last video, as I expected to. And I love it. It is so pretty. Those colors are just amazing. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do more Satsuma Street projects um, as soon as I can get around to it. Because I was very impressed with um, the enjoyability of this project and the um, and the the way it looked, the colors. Um, just, there was nothing not to like about this one. I enjoyed it immensely. Okay, so after I did that one, I actually had kind of a moment where I was like, "What the heck do I work on?" I, I you know, I felt sudden a sudden drop in enthusiasm and and didn't know what to do with myself. So, um, but so I dug through my dug through my bin of my giant bin of whips <laughs> and I and I was like oh, okay how about that and I was kind of in the mood for a band sampler I've got that Peacock Magic Majesty project planned to start soon and I thought well I've got um I've got this Victoria sampler F is for fairy um oh well I I guess I will show you a picture of what it looked like before I showed this to you in my very first video I believe and this is what it looked like before I started working on it um, several days ago. And when I started working on this, I didn't actually expect to finish this. Actually, I went from Halloween is for Cat, Halloween is Halloween Cat, and I went to Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, and that is when my enthusiasm went down and I didn't know what to do with myself. I kind of worked, I had this idea that with Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, I had this idea that I was going to finish the third block, which was turned out to be, when I decided to do that, I must not have really looked at the third block. Because there's a lot of stitching in that third block. It's a lot of stitching. There's a big giant white house in the middle of it and takes up most of the block. And it was just, you know, unreasonable to think that I could finish the second block, which didn't have that much, and start and finish the third block without burning out. That just wasn't going to happen. So I stitched a little bit too long on it and it kind of came very close to killing my stitchy bug. So when I finally put it away, that was when I had my um, spate of um, lack of enthusiasm. And But I pulled this out. And this is, was like the perfect antidote to um, to Shores of Hawk Run, which I love, but um, but which was a lot of white and a lot of same old, same old. And it was just, you know, making me crazy. But I started this, and at the time I started it, I had all of this done. And this strip here... And this so what I had to do where I started was doing the Falcon and the fountain and then all of the bands under here until I got to the end and um, I say it's the perfect antidote to something like the shores of Hawk Run that in this third block is all you know a lot of weight and it's beautiful but it um, you know it grates on you after a while stitching not just all of one color, which isn't so bad if there's a, you know, if you're stitching a lot of little motifs and there's a variety in the shapes of what you're stitching for me. But um, when it's a lot of one color and it's just line after line after line, like you're doing on a house, and it's not even variegated, it's not even a variegated brick or something, it's just white. And it may, no matter how gorgeous it is, it just grates on me after a while. So, so, um, this takes a lot of concentration. You know, you spend, you put in this bird, for example, which is, I started on the fountain, I think. You know, you just put in, you know, 15 or so stitches of white, and then you're going to another thread, and then you're going over here and you're doing the bird, which is a few stitches of this and a few stitches of that, and then some back stitch. You know, and then you get done with that, and you're going down to this band underneath here, which is one long strip of the same. But still, you know, half an hour and you're done. And there's beads and, you know, there's just a lot of variety. And that band under here, this one underneath the beaded band, that beautiful thing, that's all one variegated thread. It's called Bellagio by Gloriana. Gloriana and, and, and are beautiful silks to work with. And um, 
their variegateds are gorgeous. And Bellagio, which is very aptly named, um, is one of the most beautiful um, color combinations in variegateds that I am aware of. And I very much enjoyed that. And then we've got some forget-me-nots. This is Ephes for Fairy, if you didn't see my, if you don't remember from when I spoke about it before. This is Ephes for Fairy by the Victoria Sampler. It is on 28 count platinum by Zweigert. Um, the Victoria Sampler has done this whole alphabet series of basically learning samplers that are um, most of the motifs and most of the specialty stitches in the, in the project are start with the letter F. So fern stitches, feather stitches, forget-me-nots, um, French knots, forget-me-nots being the flower, frogs, flies, um, foxtails, you know, F, F, F. And then it says F is for fairy at the bottom. And, and then that's the end of it. F is for fairy. I really like those. Um, I th think think those are the fern stitches. I could be wrong. Um, now it's not finished finished. Well, obviously, because it's not in frame, but these are all designed to be bell pulls and they have some pulled thread. Um, I don't know if it's strictly hard anger or whatever, but it's some pulled thread work that's supposed to go around um, the border. And um, I haven't, I don't know how to do that stuff yet. I want to, but I need to learn how to do that on something that's not precious. Um, I've got some extra fabric here, so I'm thinking I'll cut it off and I'll follow the instructions and I'll learn how to do it and I'll gain some confidence with it. And then do the, um, then do the pulled thread work that's supposed to outline this entire thing. And then you're supposed to make a bell pull out of it. Uh, so, but it's finished for my purposes right now. The main stitching is finished. And I have two more of these in my possession. I can't remember which letters I have, but I have two more of these, two more of these Victoria sampler, um, letter samplers in my possession. And I just need to get myself some 28 count platinum and do it because there's not quite enough extra fabric on this, um, to do, to do that comfortably. So, um, especially with the pulled, pulled thread work that is, is on here too. Um, so that is going to have to, have to wait, um, for until I feel comfortable doing it. Um, but I'll get more, um, I'll get more fabric and I'll do these other band slampers, but probably first I'll do my Peacock Majesty. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I won't be able to wait. Um, so, um, after finishing, so those are my two finishes, um, and that is finish number 14 and 15 for the year. After I worked on, after I finished Halloween Cat and before I got out F is for Fairy, I, as I said I would, um, I got out my Shores of Hawk Run Hollow, and I, um, here I will, um, show you a picture of it the way it was, um, before. I showed it to you in my first video, I believe. That's where it was before. As you can see, I had mostly finished the second block, and my tentative plan was to do, finish the second block, and do the entire third block. It's gonna be, uh, probably next time I work on this, I'll be able to, I hope, finish that third block before I put it away again, but this third block is a doozy. Um, it is gorgeous. I, I really love it, but anyway, here is where I'm at now. So I finished the, finished the second block, and I got a very healthy start on the third block, but I'm nowhere near finishing it. Not only do I have a lot of white to fill in on the house, there's a tree and stuff too, so there's more than just white to fill on the house. There's some there's some other stuff. Um, I got all the windows in, but um, those red berry like things, they're going to have um, like a tree that they're attached to. So there's that. Um, but it's a lot of white. And then underneath that wavy line is going to be water, which is a lot of one color, but inside the water is going to be some fish and also a mermaid. So, um, so there's a lot of stitching on this block. It's a lot of solid. I do love this lacy thing. It confused me at first. Like, I don't know what it's supposed to be. But what I'm telling myself, because there's going to be a lacy corner over here too, what I'm telling myself about this is that I'm envisioning that it's like somebody across the street is looking through their lace curtains at that house. 
Because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know what the corners are there for, unless they're just a pointless decoration. There's a few things, and looking more closely at the pattern, there's a few things on this, um, on this, on this piece that don't make sense throughout. Like, there's like a flying deer, and yeah, there's just some stuff I don't get. But I'm stitching it all anyway. I don't care if I don't get it. It's beautiful. Um, but, um, and I'll touch on those when they come up when I, when I eventually get to them. But it's looking beautiful. And this project is at what actually inspired my, my name change to my channel because I realized that working with this pattern on this fabric with these NPI silks, it really is literally, until I wore it burned out on it, every stitch, it feels good. Every stitch is a pleasure. Every single, like just the whole time I'm working with them, these NPIs are so easy to work with. You can, I don't, I can work on Usually with DMC, if I work with one thread, I have to use shorter strands, it frays, I, you know, it dies. And my experience with silks in general is that I have to work with longer, uh, sharp, sorry, shorter pieces, particularly with like Krynik, which Krynik Silk Mori, um, it, it frays if you try to use too large of a strip, uh, too large of a strand at a time. But the NPI silks, that is not the case for me. Like, there is no fraying. It doesn't, like, bunch up on itself and get into knots. Um, every stitch goes through smoothly and beautifully. Um, it's super friendly to work with and just so beautiful. And they're solid. They're not, they're not variegated. However, I do find that I see some variegation. Um... I do these, I've been doing these, um, I started over here with the lighthouse doing them one stitch at a time, and you may not be able to see, but in real life, myself, I can see some variegation in the white and the red, and I don't think it's the fabric, I think it's real. I've been told that these are not variegated. I know they are not called variegated, that they're called solids, but I do see some variegation. Not enough to make me continue to stitch one stitch at a time, which takes longer and uses up more thread. But regardless, variegation or no variegation, they are just absolutely gorgeous colors. They're just so beautiful and beautiful to work with. And really, every stitch you put in with them is a pleasure. Um, so um, I will try to get back to this soon. Because as I said before, I'm going to want Halloween at Hawker and Hollow. I'm going to want to buy that probably at Christmas. Um, and I'm going to want to have gotten more work in on this in order to feel, um, to feel as positively as possible about starting the next one. Okay. So let's see. Those are my... Those are three of my whoops. My two finishes. Now, my two starts. So... Um, a few days ago, I started this, um, by the Elfin Forest. Oh, I will show you a picture here of this one by the Elfin Forest. It is, um, the, I don't know what she's calling it. The, um, I don't know that it had a, I don't remember. Wizard of Oz balloon is what I'm calling it. I'm not sure that that's what she's calling it, but, um, it's, you know, gonna be the, there's gonna be a black border, like you can kind of see I've started here, and then there's going to be the balloon that says State Fair Omaha in it, and then Wizard of the Wizard of Oz is standing in there, and there's a basket, and he's got his top hat off over here, and there's some clouds. Um, so it won't take that long, um, and the colors are gorgeous, and this is the fabric. Um, this is, I think, a Wichelt, I believe it's Wichelt, um, linen in um, 32 count, and it's stiffer than... Um, Zweigert. I'm finding it very nice. Like it's stiff, but it's not so stiff and thick that it hurts me to work on like, like another fabric I mentioned last time. Um, but, um, it is kind of nice to work on, but I am finding that it is fraying my threads, um, more quickly than, um, Zweigert. So I am finding that I'm having to work with shorter strands because it's like tearing up the DMC. Um, which I don't remember it doing in the past. I've worked on Wichelt in the past, like the way past, like 15, 20 years ago. Pretty sure I had worked on Wichelt fabrics before. Um, 
And I remember them being a little stiffer, but I don't remember them tearing up my thread. So maybe that I'm working with longer threads now. Maybe I'm just misremembering, or maybe DMC is not as good as it used to be. I don't know, but um, I don't have that problem with um, with the Zweigart, with the softer um, linens. But um, this is kind of kind of tearing them up. But um, I'm still liking it, and I'm, and um, and I don't know whether to fault the fabric or the DMC for that. But um, but uh, I put in about. Eh, I don't know, four or five hours or something on this. I worked on it for like three days, but they were not um, not very long stitching days. So um, so now I did want to show you, because that's a balloon. I seem to have a thing for hot air balloons, and, um, and I've never been on a hot air balloon. Maybe I will go someday. I don't have a particular desire to go on a hot air balloon. But nevertheless, I seem to have a thing for hot air balloons. <laughs> I have two other projects that feature hot air balloons and that are in in progress right now they're whips and i'm going to show them to you right now both of them both of them are from this brand this um stitch world cross stitch this one is called moonlight flight and um i am a good portion of the way through this um i haven't worked on it in a while i'm doing this on navy not ada Na it calls for navy ada i'm working on a on um, a 28 count um i think it's just Pretty, I think it's Cashel. It could be, it could be, all it says is 28 count Navy. Navy. It doesn't tell me, um, I'm trying to figure out if this is even weave or, or linen. Um, I think it's linen. I think it's 28 count Cashel. Um, I don't think it's Jobalon. I think it's 28 count Cashel. Um, and look at that. Oh, I like that. Look at that balloon. Oh, that balloon was a chore. So I'm actually a good portion of the way through this thing. There's lots of metallics. It's beautiful. Um, and um, but that balloon, it's beautiful, but it was a killer, man. All those yellows and brown, brownish golds and stuff. Very, very pretty. But... Uh, a lot more challenging to count and stuff than I thought it would be and uh, turned out beautiful though um, I'm super happy with that and really there's not that much left I have some clouds that are pretty easy to do I have the clouds all those clouds that are not too bad and um, a little bit of basket and the outline of the houses and the houses are not even stitched the outline is stitched but that what looks like dark blue on there is just fabric showing through. So I really don't have, I've got a large portion of this done. Maybe, you know, maybe 70% or something. I don't know. I've got a lot of it done. I've got the difficult stuff done. So, um, you know, if I get this out again at some point, um, it, you know, I might get it done in one shot. Um, with the way I stitch, you know, I might stitch on it, and st stitch on it until it's done. Now that I've gotten that, uh, that giant, yellow gold brown balloon done so i have another another whip to share with you my other balloon um whip same company balloon over tuscany sorry this, this is kind of bent up i bought these patterns off on stash unload um balloon over tuscany and i am doing this on an inexpensive um I believe 28 count. I think I wanted to do them both on 28 count. So I'm pretty sure it's 28 count because I wanted them to kind of look like they went together. Um, I don't have quite as much done on this one, I don't think. There's, um, but one thing that I didn't know about when I got this project was I didn't realize that the um, balloon itself was, um, those are half stitches. Um, and, hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about the way they look. Um, I think the effect is gonna be is gonna be good in the end. It gives that the balloon kind of that thin, inflated um, appearance um, that I think in the end is gonna be nice and I'm gonna like it. But right now I'm kind of I'm not so sure how I'm feeling about it. Um, so it's giving me a little less enthusiasm for this project. It is quick, or it would be except half stitches I tend to make more mistakes on so why, why the heck is that why do we make more mistakes because it should take us half the time but 
if it's harder to count for whatever reason, I think it's the diagonal, you know, the X is like a square and you look at it when it's done, it's a square, it's head on. The half stitches, there are these diagonals and I tend, and I'm sure, I've heard this from other people too, I tend to make more mistakes. And so, even though it should theoretically save me half the time because you're making half the, half the actual stitches, um, it doesn't. It, I tend to screw up and therefore it doesn't save me time. Oh, so yeah, so I start and finally on my birthday today, gotta have a birthday start, right? I started, I got just the barest start in because again, half stitches, difficult to, difficult for me to count. I got just the barest start in on Victorian charm. And I even got in to put in a few of my beloved um, French knots. And I'm using again my own my own fabric, um, 28 count. So that those are all half stitches, and then one strand for the white French knots for the stars. And um, I'm liking the way it's looking so far. It's very subtle, the blues against the blues, but it's a challenge to count because um, it's all those half stitches. And I'm. I'm using the call I'm using the kit threads now I'm using the fabric that came with it it came with 18 count which would really be a 36 count equivalent although I know that 18 logically and mathematically I know that 18 and 36 are, are equivalent just as 14 is equivalent to 28 but in reality for whatever reason um, you know People, I don't think, would generally do two, one strand on 18 count fabric, and yet they will do one strand on 36 count. I do two strands on 36 count, but that's neither here nor there. What I'm saying is that 28 count, for whatever reason, seems like a finer count, even though you're doing it over two, than working on 14 count Ada. This, fa this project comes with 18 count Ada. Now, if I had a 36 count Navy, um, I would do it on that, but I'm impatient and I'm doing it on the 28. Um, it would be better if it was 32 probably, but anyway, what I'm getting at is I'm wondering, I may run out of threads. I am very um, conservative. Um, I'm a very frugal stitcher when it comes to threads and I almost never run out of threads in kits. Um, so I'm hoping that I won't. And if I do, I do, then I'll do whatever I have to do to get more threads, even if it means buying a new kit. Um, but it probably won't. Hopefully I can get some. Um, or if um, if it's not right next to each other, I can use the DMC equivalent or whatever. But I'll be curious to see whether I run out of threads because I'm choosing to do this on a 28 count cashel, as opposed to an 18 count or the, uh, the supposed uh, mathematical equivalent of 36 count um, um, Edinburgh to the, to the comes with it 18 count Ada. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm not too worried. Um, I'm not at all worried about the way it's going to look. I think it's gonna look just fine on the, on the 28 count with the two strands. I'm not concerned about that at all. And of course this being dimensions, there are Mm, they use up to four strands in some places. They have French knots with four strands. You know, I love French knots and I have considered myself a, a French knot expert, even if I do say so myself, but four strands? Like, I'm real curious to see how that works. Right now, the French knots are in one strand. Um, my favorite way to do French knots is with two strands. I've never tried three strand French knots. I could be mistaken, but I think they call for three strand. There's like a crap ton of French knots in this project, which is one of the reasons why I bought it. Cause way back when somebody told me, I'd already been interested in this project, but way back when on like my first video, I think somebody commented that Victorian Charm had lots of French knots. So that bumped it up on my, on my wish list. Oh no, I'm wrong. They have French knots in one strand, like I'm doing French knots in two strands, French knots in four strands, no French knots in three strands. Um, and in fact, there's not anything in this project that calls for three strands. There are some tweeted places, lots of tweeting in this, which I don't like, I love tweeting. I think the look of tweeting is great and I don't actually get why people think it's hard because I've heard people say it's more difficult, but you know, you're just 
it's still two strands and you're just matching up two different colors. I don't I don't understand why that's why that's um, considered to be more difficult. Um, but you know, I know a lot of people like with Teresa Wensler and stuff like that, I find Teresa Wensler's to not be easy at all, but it's not because of the tweeting. It's um, other things <laughs> that make the Teresa Wensler projects difficult, not tweeting. Um, but um, anyway, so that's um, that's all of my whips. Um, and I guess that's and I guess that's it. Um, I did things out of order, so I got myself a little bit turned around, but I, I think that's it. Hey, um, we're at just under an hour. That seems to be my average here. Um, thanks everybody for, for continuing to watch and showing up, showing up for me. And, um, and, um, I love all your comments. Uh, VerPR, uh, congratulations on winning my, winning, winning my giveaway. Please send me an email and I will, um, and I will, um, I will ship that right out to you wherever in the world you happen to be. And I hope you, you get as much enjoyment out of those patterns as I did. And I will probably talk to you all again in another, uh, another two weeks. I think this every other week thing is, is working out for me. Probably won't be quite so much, um, so much, uh, stash to show in future videos. Um, now that my birthday has passed, um, I'm gonna slow down a bit. I have a lot of projects right now that I could start. I need to get some fabric and some little, you know, things here and there, some DMC and stuff, but nothing exciting. And I'm gonna try to slow down on the acquisitions because suddenly, again, this happens to me. I suddenly get a bunch of stuff and then I'm like, oh my God, I have a lot of stuff. And then, um, and then I, you know, right now, I have. if I wanted to start a new project, I have quite a few options for starting new projects and um, I don't need any more. So um, I may try to try to slow down on uh, on new purchases until um, possibly and save my money until um, until I can purchase the Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow because I have a lot of magazine patterns. If I want to start something new, I have without actually going out and spending any money to speak of, I have quite a few things I could start. And not to mention the 35 to 40 things I have um, to work on to finish. So, so there won't be quite so much um, what you all call haul <laughs> in my in my um, in my upcoming videos. Anyway, I'm just babbling. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Bye bye.